The 98th Armenian Genocide Commemoration was held in New York City's Times Square on Sunday, April 21, 2013 from 2 to 4 p.m. This annual gathering at the epicenter of the world's largest city is sponsored by the Knights and Daughters of Vartan with the participation of numerous Armenian-American organizations of the metropolitan New York area. We share with you highlights of the program. But we promise this, that even when the last survivor is gone, we will keep the memory of the Armenian Genocide alive. Because that is our duty to do what is right. We come here to remember. We come here to never forget. We come here because we are speaking truth to power. We tell the world we tell Turkey, we tell everyone, you cannot deny genocide in Armenia or anywhere else because the candle of truth always burns brighter than lies. We know that. And we are here to light thousands of those candles for those who perish, the 1.5 million in Armenia, for those who have perished in genocides subsequent to that and for those young children who should learn the lessons of history so that we will never repeat the most awful chapters of history of which the Armenian genocide is one. Every time a genocide occurs we say never again. Time and time again we promise we will fight them but if we cannot remember those genocides that occur in the past we will not be able to prevent those that might, God forbid, occur in the future. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I stand here as a proud sponsor, along with Senator Menendez and others, of the resolution in Congress that, it, that, it, that says and proclaims that there was a genocide, that we will not forget that genocide, and that we will always remember those who are lost. It is the least we can do for our heritage, for our country, and for our world. Ketse Hayastan. My name is Peter Katujin, and I am the High Sheriff of Middlesex County. Now, in the Constitution, they spell it H-I-G-H, -H, but I think we all know here we spell it H-Y-E, don't we? Your eminences, reverend clergy, elected officials, it is wonderful and a tremendous honor for me to be joining you here in historic Times Square in this great city of New York. I want to say thank you to the uh, organizers and especially all of you that have attended and a very special thank you to the survivors that have come out here today and their families for making sure they could make it out here today because I know it's not easy uh, to get folks out sometimes and I know that it takes an extra commitment, not just from them, but from their families to be here. My fellow Armenians, my fellow Americans, my fellow Armenian Americans, and to my sister Mara that just happens to be passing by uh, through this city. She's from Chicago and she has to pass by, so it's great to see her here today. I wanted to say a special thank you for Senator Schumer for being here. 
You know, he took time to come out here, and he comes out here every year. And we all know what an important man he is. And to me, that shows the commitment that he has to our community and the greatness of that man, because he doesn't need to be out here, yet, here every year, and yet he is. And to Controller Lou, I want to say congratulations, sir. I know you're running for mayor, and you could be the first Asian mayor of a large city in the United States. It would be an amazing thing. Many of you might know that we also have our own State House commemoration in Boston, in our fabulous State House. And if you ever come up, please come and join us. It is a very special day. And we have our own survivors that come each and every year, and our own survivors come less and less. They don't have to weather the elements like your survivors do here, but they eat less and less each year, and there will be the day when there will be no one that will be there as a survivor. In Boston, we built Armenian Heritage Park that many of you might have known about, whereas an amendment that I passed about 12 years ago, in an effort, effort driven by the Knights of Vartan in Greater Boston, that joined a great man by the name of Jim Kalustian to join with me. And if you ever come up to have any of you been, have you seen the Armenian Heritage Park in Boston? Have you ever been there? Yeah. It is a stunningly beautiful place, right on the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Greenway, folks. A beautiful park with a labyrinth, with marble and grass and park benches, a dodecahedron that changes shape. Every year we're going to change that shape of black onyx with a waterfall and a single jet of water and an inscription on it that is very powerful about welcoming Armenian to these shores and speaking about the Armenian genocide perpetrated from 1915 through 23 where one and a half million of our people lost our lives right there in the heart of Boston on the roads with Charlotte Kennedy Greenway where millions of tourists come every year and take photos and children play that is something of which I'm very proud and we welcome you to come and see this but instead, I'm here with the Armenian Radio Hour at the Times Square, uh, April 24th commemoration. We're with Sheriff Peter Petujian, who is the sheriff of Middlesex County, Massachusetts. That's right, Sheriff. Thank you for uh, being here with us. Uh, how was your involvement growing up in uh, Massachusetts and the Armenian community? Well, my parents both encouraged me to participate uh, in my Armenianism. I went to Armenian school, uh, Sahad Mezrab Armenian School in St. James. Growing up, I took a couple of years from high school because my parents advocated for that. Uh, and since then, I've been go I go. I've grown up going going to Holy Cross Armenian Catholic Church. My kids go to the Armenian Sisters Academy in Lexington, so it's, uh, it's very, mar very much ingrained in everything I do. The, the world essentially was watching, uh, made a breath in the last week. Middlesex County, uh, Watertown is in Middlesex County where all this was happening, the terrorists in the Boston Marathon. How involved were you in that and what was the general feeling being in there, in Watertown? It was a very powerful experience. Uh, um, I remember going the very night of the uh, the bombing, um, going in with my, some of my SWAT team uh, into uh, Boston that night to protect the citizenry. I uh, went to the President's Interfaith Service and my guys were helping protect Boston for that period of time. And then when Watertown occurred, um, it was about uh, midnight, one in the morning, I, I got out of my bed I'm in the next town over, I'm in Waltham, and I went right over there and uh, stood with my men for the next 24 hours. It was the most amazing scene that is, as, an, as an Armenian, as an Armenian American, as an American, one of the most powerful scenes I could ever describe to you as uh, thousands of police officers descended into Watertown. Uh, the citizens stayed in their homes so they could be protected and let the police do their job to protect them and watch this all in concert throughout the day. At the very end, as they sort of declared that they would release the, the prohibition of movement in the city, uh, which was voluntary and everyone was abiding by that, uh, suddenly someone went out, noticed something unusual, they found uh, the suspect hiding in a boat and then we all descended on that area and he was captured and it was captured alive which is something that I did not expect at the end of this uh, the, the scenario. We all were Armenian, we all know somebody in Watertown and the surrounding area so everybody's getting kind of first hand experience, uh, first hand details about what was going on but I mean you were on the front line, you were with your men. Oh it's right there I, yeah. I got to imagine that you've never experienced something like this before. And, it was, you, you, and we all said it, there were hundreds of police officers uh, that, that would say it's not um, that uh, they would, uh, that they have never been involved, we'll never see anything like this right. perhaps again. There's never been anything like this in the history of the United States. Right. Uh, and then to see the, the members of the community, what was really touching was at the very end of the night, once we captured the suspect, I was a couple of hundred yards away in that neighborhood with uh, everyone as we all stood back. Um, and
and they captured him and, and then they took him away by ambulance and, and at first there were you know many police officers up and down the street with police cars and trucks and vehicles throughout all lights going uh, and then as we were leaving uh, first sort of a couple of tentative cries from the second floor windows uh, people uh, just calling out thank you or saying great job or uh, clapping and you couldn't even see their faces they were still sort of high hunkering down uh, and then as we continued to proceed out of that neighborhood to see more and more people coming to their porch and, and clapping and saying thank you great job and then coming to the sidewalks and shaking our hands and patting us on the back it was one of the most uh, powerful experiences I've ever had in my life and you could see all the toughest men and women from around the, the state and around even the greater New England area being very touched by this. Thank mm -hmm. you.